Hi everybody, welcome back to California Chris. Uh, today we're going to carry on with our handover process, so we're actually going to look on the inside of the vehicle. Uh, but this today's video is going to be more about things like your electric windows, your stereo, etc. and things like that, how they actually work. So uh, we'll make a start on here on the door card. Uh, so on your door card here we have your, your central locking button. Um, the central locking button, if you're camping and you, you want to lock the vehicle at night, that's the button to press. Don't use your key use your button on the central locking system uh, and that way then it won't activate your alarm uh, and you won't be waking anybody up in the middle of the night uh, with, uh, with an alarm going off. Uh, the button next to it here is for your electric mirrors so you'd move it to the right or to the left and then it's just a toggle so up down left and right and your mirrors obviously will move depending on those. Uh, if you turn it round to the left hand side your mirrors will go up as you can probably see on the video there uh, move it back and they'll move back down and turning it round to the right hand side uh, is your heated mirror section so that will obviously in, in the winter time will heat the mirrors up that's there as well. Um, you've got your electric windows in the front, two switches now. Moving over to your lights panel, um, <clears throat> this particular model uh, as it's model year 18 has got the lights and visions pack as standard so it's got your auto lights um, if you didn't have that rather than the auto you would just have uh, your normal off that would be there uh, side lights, press it to one. Main lights is your second one. To activate your front fog lights, you pull it out once. And then to activate your rear fog lights, you pull it out a second time. Uh, your front fog lights will just come on. Uh, there'll be no warning on the dash, uh, but on your rear fog lights, you will get a warning light on your dash to tell you that your rear fog light is on, uh, so that you know that it's on from on there. Um, those functions won't work with it on the auto setting. You will actually need to turn your lights on for those to, uh, to work. Um, and then just pop it back to auto, uh, and then obviously the auto function, you go through a tunnel, anything like that, and your lights will come on. Uh, you come back out, the tunnel will go off again. Uh, if you get low light conditions, uh, for example in rain and, and things like that, for example, they'll come back on as well. Uh, so uh, the next function is the, on the indicator stalk here. This one is for your windscreen wipers. Uh, so your windscreen wipers, if you press it down once, gives you an intermittent wiper. Uh, up once, puts it onto the auto function. Um, if you don't have the automatic the lights and visions pack on your vehicle, that's the intermittent wiper. And the um, switch on the top here uh, determines uh, the um, speed at which it goes, or the sensitivity of the actual uh, sensor itself, one of the two. You've also got two manual settings above that as well, so one and two uh, will obviously increase the speed uh, at which the, uh, the wipers go. To squirt the front windscreen, pull it towards you. Uh, the rear windscreen wiper, push it back, that turns it on. And then push it again, obviously that does uh, squirts the rear windscreen wiper as well. Uh, a note on the rear windscreen wiper, if any of you have got a bike rack, uh, obviously with that if you can just make sure that your bars, if you've not actually got bikes on there, uh, are away from the windscreen, so if you do put your wiper blade on it, it, it just sweeps backwards and forwards there as well. So. Um, now this vehicle is fitted with a multifunction steering wheel. If you've seen one of our other videos with uh, model year changes, uh, this is the one that's got the um, paddle shift function that's on there as well. So I'm just going to jump in the vehicle and show you a little bit more detail about uh, what's actually on the multifunction steering wheel. So uh, on the right hand side here you can move your tracks up and down, two buttons uh, from on here so if you're connected to Bluetooth for example and you're streaming some music or uh, a CD for example that's on there you can move them up and down on there. Uh, you've got up and down functions which is to do with your multifunction display uh, which is in the centre of the dash. So if you to put the key in and turn it over, turn the wiper wipers off that's on there, uh, the middle of your dash, just press the OK button, that's because we've got the doors open here. Um, and then in the middle of the dash there, uh, it will give you different ranges. So your up and down buttons here will change between your uh, the time you've been travelling, your average consumption, etc. that's in there. Uh, your Ad Blue Reserve, which we talked about on a previous video, uh, that's there, distance travelled, etc. And you can just skip through um, each of those. Uh, we may at some point do another video just solely on that, because there's quite a lot of information in there. So. Um, you can move between them by using these silver arrow keys here and that will then take you through your different uh, functions that's in there. So ACC, the Adaptive Cruise Control, which this model has, um, it's in there. Your telephone system's in there as well. Uh, your assistance settings. Uh, this vehicle, uh, as with all model year uh, vehicles, have the driver alert system. So that's monitoring how you're driving uh, and at certain times it will give you advice on things like when to take a rest. Um, 
quite a useful function, function that's on there as well. Uh, also your radio would come on, if the radio was on in here that would come also come up in the middle of your uh, systems uh, as well. And that's what that side of it uh, is doing that's there as well. So again if you're on the radio you can move your tracks up and down through the radio as well, which is quite good. Uh, on the other side of the steering wheel that's on here we've got your plus and minus for your volume controls. Uh, and then the rest is to do on this particular vehicle is to do with the ACC, the Adaptive Cruise System. So um, very easy, you've got an on button, which turns it on, and you get a notification on the dash to say that. Um, to set the vehicle, so if you're at 50 miles an hour and you want to set it, press set. Uh, you've got cancel, and you can also resume as well, so that if it's turned itself off, you can pop it back on and it'll take you back to the speed you're at. Uh, the middle button here, which is the good thing for ACC, uh, the Adaptive Cruise here, that by pressing it in the middle of the dash will show you if we can just have a quick look at that on the dash here you can change the distance at which the ACC will actually work so it monitors the car in front of you and you can set the faster you're going obviously you can create a bigger distance between you and the car in front and it will just follow that car so as soon as that if that car turns off the motorway uh, and you were set at 60 and you were doing 50 at that time, you would then accelerate to 60 miles an hour. Uh, and you stay at 60 until something else, for example, caught up with traffic, and then the vehicle would brake and slow you down. Um, I personally think it's brilliant. I, I really do like Adaptive Cruise. Uh, with our roads in the UK here, um, traffic's usually quite heavy, so it will keep braking and braking and braking, uh, up to the point where you pretty much at a stop, uh, the Adaptive Cruise will work. So I found it uh, very, very useful here. Um, and it's, it's a good function that's on the vehicle as well. So, uh, so that's the main part of the steering wheel. We then move over to the other indicators. So indicators up and down. Uh, pull towards you is your main beam. And if you like to run and you push it back, that will put your main beams on uh, as well that's on there. So uh, this particular vehicle's got high beam assist. Uh, which is an option uh, on the California Ocean. Uh, the high beam assist basically monitors oncoming traffic and if it sees something coming towards you with lights on and you've got your main beams on, it will automatically turn your uh, your main beams off uh, as well. And that's worked in throughout that function there as well. So, um, Moving across the dash again, uh, in here we've got an automatic gearbox in this one, so auto or manual gearbox and your gearbox will be there. Um, the gear you're in is on the top of your dash as well. Uh, your dash where it says P, if you move it down into reverse, it'll say reverse, neutral, etc. and into drive. I'm just going to push that back up for a minute as we're, um, as we're sitting in the car. Uh, and that's those functions there. We've then got your stereo system here. I'll just turn the parking sensors off. And uh, we have the radio function. Now the radio has uh, a standard radio, FM, also has DAB functions as well. DAB is standard uh, across the transporter range now. Uh, so you've got all those in there and you can preset uh, lots of different stations that's in there as well. So um, we are going to do another video on the navigation system uh, and the stereo. So this particular one has got the Discover Media navigation system. Uh, there is an upgrade for composite media as well. Uh, and we're going to be having a, uh, a video on a bit more look around those uh, those as well in the future. So uh, probably best to have a check out of those uh, later on. But as a brief guide on here, your buttons, you've got your radio. Media is either uh, SD card, Bluetooth, CD um, is in there as well. So lots of different options for, for putting things in. Even in AUX as well, you can plug a headphone socket in. Your phone system. I will be showing you a video lately on how to actually program your phone in uh, that's on there. Uh, if you've ordered with voice, which on the California, because you've got the, uh, on the ocean model, if you go for the navigation system, uh, the only one available is the plus, which comes with voice. Um, so you've got voice commands that's in there as well. Um, navigation, uh, which is really good. Um, it's SD card based and you can upgrade the SD cards uh, as maps and more maps come available, which is good. Um, on the new model year 18, the button here has actually changed now, it says app. Um, previously um, it said something else which I've forgotten now, but it now says app, um, which takes you straight into App Connect, uh, which on the ocean is standard if you take the uh, navigation system that's there. App Connect allows you to plug in your uh, mobile phone, uh, so if you work with Apple for example, that works with CarPlay. Uh, if you've got an Android phone, uh, that, run, uh, that works again with uh, the Connect system for the Android phone as well. So uh, we'll be showing you some bit more videos on those as well. Really good system, uh, works very well with both. 
Um, the very important thing I would say with App Connect, if any of you have had any problems with it uh, from on there, is you must use the manufacturer supplied lead uh, to connect it to the actual vehicle via USB. If you don't do that uh, and you use a, a generic lead, uh, that's generally where the communication problems uh, can arise from it. Uh, and it's due to the, the pin locations, I won't go into detail, but it's due to the pin locations and what data uh, is sent to them. So if it's an iPhone, for example, uh, use the proper iPhone lead uh, and you shouldn't have any problems then, uh, with it as well. Uh, works very effectively. And then you've also got your main menu. So your main menu just wishes through all your different options uh, that you've got on there as well. And there's lots of things that we could talk about. Uh, and we will do a separate video on some of those options, uh, which you now got uh, got on there. It will take too long today, unfortunately. Um, so also on your dash, top section here, uh, so you've got a nice storage that's in here, nice and deep, uh, plenty that's in there. Um, on here, again, another storage unit that's here with a USB. Uh, this is good if you, for the app connect because you can plug your phone into there, put it away, and then there's no, um, uh, you know, you're not inclined to touch your phone or anything like that, which obviously from a safety perspective is great. Uh, that's what I do with my vehicle. I put mine in there, put it in. Uh, and just leave it, uh, which is there. I've um, got a pull-out tray here. So you've got two cup holders, uh, a bit of it, I think this is for like money and, and bits and pieces there, and just go back as well so you can put other things in there as well, sunglasses, etc. you want. And at the bottom, we have a big bottle drawer that's in the bottom there, which you can get like a 1.5, 2 litre uh, bottle of water or Coke or whatever your preference is, it's there. Uh, and that goes in there as well. So. Um, I'm going to come back to the uh, heating system uh, in a minute because we're going to have a swap over and uh, uh, my cameraman <laughs> is going to go around the other side. Uh, but here for the main part of the dash, um, we've got again glove box area here. Um, this is generally where I would keep the, um, uh, the hand books for the vehicles uh, as it fits nicely in there. And a lockable glove box underneath there as well, um, which is there, which also has the cooling function as well with the air conditioning system. So uh, I know you've got a fridge in the back, but you can... You know, if you want other things, cold drinks and stuff in there, and you want them handy as a driver, uh, that's the place uh, to put them. That's there. Uh, just above in the headlining here, just one thing to make note of is sunglasses holders. It's in there. Your reading lights on either side, and your uh, button which determines the vehicle's lights will come on. So at the moment, as it's set from there, as soon as you open the door, the lights will come on. You can turn the whole system off. When you're camping, that's what you want to be doing all the time, uh, is turning it off. So every time you get in and out of the vehicle, your main lights in the uh, in the cab area don't uh, don't come on. Um, turn them from those back to where they are. So uh, Phil's just going to quickly go around the other side of the vehicle, so we'll see you in a minute and we'll go through the heating controls. Right, swaps around. So we'll take you through the heating controls now on the dash. Uh, so standard with the three zone climate control on the uh, Ocean model here. So you've got your temperature uh, that's on the side. If you um, press the sync button, uh, it will sync both sides in. So it's a three zone system. So zones one, driver, zone two for the passenger, and zone three, which is in the rear of the vehicle. And there is a control up in the rear as well, uh, which you can control from there. So the people in the back can set a different temperature to the front. Uh, whenever you press sync, though, it will sync back to the driver's one, and then all will sync into what the driver's doing. But your passenger can set their own as well to whatever temperature they want. As I'm sure you can appreciate, there's no screen in between the two seats. Um, so hot and cold, except, you know, there's a degree to which they will uh, they will work. Uh, also on there is you've got your AC, your air conditioning. Uh, your rest function, um, um, not as important with the, with the Ocean model because you have got your heater on board, your auxiliary heater, uh, your parking heater. Uh, but if, for example, you stop to have some sandwiches, uh, you can press the rest button. It will use the energy stored, the heat stored in the uh, heating system uh, to keep the cab warm while you're sitting there without your engine running. So uh, that's quite good. It's quite a popular thing on caravels and, and things that don't have the uh, uh, parking heater. But obviously with yourselves, if you've got an ocean or you're looking at an ocean, you could just put the uh, uh, put that heating system on. So uh, in the middle here is your fan controls. So you twist it from side to side and you'll see the fans going up and down from on there. Um, auto, as I said, <coughs> the auto function it just means it will keep it at the temperatures you want rather than going from on there and the rear function allows you to control the rear from the front of the vehicle so you can change the temperature uh, that's in there as well from the uh, from the back of the vehicle uh, this particular one uh, has got the heated windscreen which is the button there and then the button on the far side here uh, will put your fans on 
Obviously your windscreen to clear your windscreen in the morning time. Uh, and then the row above that is your heated seats on either side, so driving passenger heated seats, just standard. Uh, put the air from the front vents, the front vents here next to the radio and your feet. Uh, the recirculation button, so by pressing the recirculation button it will only take air from within the cab, so it will stop taking air from outside. Um, two benefits of that, one if you're stuck in traffic or you're behind a vehicle and you can see smoke coming out from the vehicle, if you press that button it will stop taking air from outside. Um, plus as well if you want it to get really cold with the air conditioning system uh, that will then uh, keep cooling the air which is already in the cab so it's recirculating the uh, the air which is already in the vehicle so um, it'll get it obviously colder and colder and colder uh, that's in there but even in its normal function the uh, the air that's coming out is pretty cold anyway so uh, I'm sure you probably not, uh, may not need that anyway. Uh, that's your heating system um, uh, the Sindan obviously that only works when the vehicle is actually running so uh, on the ocean model um, we've already done some videos on the heating system that's there uh, and we'll be doing some more as well uh, but that will be the, the camping section of these videos that we're doing so uh, so just moving on got the hazard lights uh, you can deactivate the, the passenger airbag uh, on the side of the vehicle uh, if you open the passenger door uh, you can put the key in to turn it off and your parking sensors now the parking sensors, again which is an option on the ocean, are activated by putting into reverse but you can also press the button to turn it on or off. So if you're driving into a space you'll need to press the button to activate the front parking sensors uh, and the rear ones as well because they, obviously you won't put it into reverse and then drive forward so uh, that's kind of why that's there so uh, you can move through. Um, that's there. And that's pretty much the uh, inside of the cab for uh, for most of the vehicle so I'm uh, glad you've enjoyed the video today uh, if you've got any questions on, on anything that we've covered um, that you're not sure about uh, by all means leave, the com leave in the uh, comments below uh, and we'll try and answer uh, as much as we can um, if you've enjoyed today give us a thumbs up uh, please subscribe and uh, look out for some more videos in the future thank you